And then we'll toggle another number and we'll make it go straight into memory. You betcha. And advance the address. That's how fun, that's how <laughs> that's how all computers worked and looked. It's beautiful. Back when this came out. Wow. Cool. Yeah, the Apple II GS. That's a nice, nice machine. Modern day graphics and sound, Mark the Apple II. And our Macintosh. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah, yeah cool. Plus a little sleep is cool. cool. Thank you. Great for that. <laughs> you know, and it's perfect that you see it again with the, the festival coming up. Yeah. Reload oh, yeah. Reload it. This is amazing. There's more to show you, but I know that it's more in the museum. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, common computer in for a hundred years. These are prices. Sometimes you go back. Kind of look. Get some oh, totally. What you got for me? You ordered it for me, right? <laughs> sure. It's just uh, a. How, how much we appreciate you coming, Waz. This is Steve Wozniak, who co-founded Apple. So he's here to see the delivery the of this Apple. iMac 24. Yeah. It's actually for me, but I don't want anybody to know. I'm too embarrassed. I really think it was all that thrilling, to be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, well, you're part of history now. Okay. Gotta witness this. That's it. Mm. Here, take some pictures. Like, like, except for the iMac. You want to sign for it, then? Yeah, I'll sign for it. I can sign for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to sign uh, Bruce Dammer? Nobody would know. Nobody no, you would. don't have to. No, I don't have to sign anything. Nobody would know. Well, everybody, I'm just the person who signed. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The signature guy. Yeah, it's all here. It's 24 inch. Whoa. Wait till we get it. So the you know, power book cases are getting so small. Let's go down to the barn and open it up. It'll be the newest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Put it in the barn. <laughs> put it in the barn. We only put the new stuff in the house. <laughs> yeah. You said it was coming tomorrow. No. My life included. Of course. You got there, Bruce. Like 2001, Space Odyssey, the monolith coming out. There are other ways to do it. <laughs> look at this, life size. I haven't bought a desktop machine in a while. Is that actually? You should buy this because this is. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? That'd probably be the one. Yeah. Dual core. Okay. Two gigs of RAM. Okay, now let's go uh, go get my pen. Yeah, yes, yeah, dual core, two gigs of RAM. I'll grab the pen. Built-in eyesight. Like, where's the computer? Wow! So, it sh wow! It ships with two gigs in the standard version. Wow! Uh, I don't know if it's standard. I think, I think you can so order. It you can get three gigs in the PowerBooks, the MacBooks now. Really? Yeah. That's pretty decent, That's especially if you're editing video. Oh, we do. For a long time, I was telling people, if you have more than one gig, you'll never see it. But, I guess there are some places where two isn't enough. Remember yeah, the like six forty k. Remember the six forty k limit in, in DOS machines. Like designed by Apple in California. That's all. You know what? The, the first uh, Mac had this nice uh, foam insert as well. Where's the computer? Where's the computer? This is it. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah, it's underneath there. I think we turn on the light here. Let's get some of it. All right. Let's get the uh, mystery of me. Oh, here we go. It's too easy. <laughs> Let's see what you mean. Now, the first program that starts up is the friendliest welcome in all the languages. And it's the one program that should never, ever fail on a computer by the rules of Jeff Raskin. Yeah. The very first program you ever run might be your first time ever switching to a Macintosh. That program better not fail. So the so uh, yeah, yeah. So Apple came out with the new Intel Macs. I bought one of these, one of the iMacs like this, a smaller yeah. one, for a friend's mother. Her yeah. first time ever on a Macintosh, and it got to a point in the program asking questions about dot Mac account that I had bought her, but she didn't have installed yet. Yeah. And I was trying to answer these questions a couple of times, and both the forward and back buttons dimmed. 
Nothing you could do but unplug the power. Oh my God! What a sad story to tell. And then I went to my to my power my first Intel Power Book. Same thing. It got huh. to a point where it was copying over the data from my old my old Power Book, and it said an hour and twenty three minutes left to go. Yeah. And it sat there for ten hours. Ooh. I tried it over and over and over for a couple of days till I was out of time, and it was just one bad file, one bad file, and the program would hang and not finish and not tell you it was a bad file, not give you an option. No, you don't do that. <laughs> this is supposed to be the world for the, for anybody. Yeah. You know, I mean, the rest I, of us. Well, I'll make this real easy. Well, you have yes. to plug this in too. So, then, eh? so what? Um, sign it and put the date. Well, I will leave room for Steve Jobs on the left. <laughs> okay. the, Do a nice big right signature. Side. Okay. That will give it some value. Yeah. Yeah, great. So put 006.12.14. Those are all binary digits except the six. Oh, can you put digi digi barn on the bottom so we know sure. where it was signed? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any other Digibarns. There now. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Hey. And my nav system didn't even oh, know Digibarn. Get some you pictures could, of the two of us. You can even do Digibarn.com if you want. I like. I do like that. Yeah. So then uh, when Bruce puts this on the web, people will know where to go. Okay, guys. Wells will Excellent. stand next to us. Full motion. Yay. Yay. All right. In the Digibarn. In the, nice. Next to the pigs. Oh, 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 wow. That's the Alto. The original Alto. That's the Alto with the original... It's the original mouse from Xerox. They had something different than the Alto. They were working on the, the Alto Dorado. at the time. The Dorado. I don't know. It was know. a bigger screen like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't even remember what the shape of their mouse. Was. Look at this. It. Right under the fingertip, because they figured out after about five years of research, people associated the cursor with the finger if, it, if the pickup was there, and everybody else moved the ball back there. It's like the QWERTY keyboard. Huh. Isn't that so funny? They did it the right way. Yeah, and look at this. This is a QWERTY the world gone now? key set. Oh, it's all still kind of so it's in all the wrong place. It's infrared. This is all. This is so you can hit a cut, copy, paste, mm -hmm. and do menu selections without touching the keyboard. Two-handed operation. I don't recall them doing that. Yeah, that's called that. a corded key set. Yeah, torn out of the ceiling at Xerox Park, and and this is Dave yeah, Boggs. Yeah who co-invented Ethernet. This is his drop to his computer. Well, ThickNet was just unimaginable in a home. But they had ThinNet also. And Apple came out with some cards and I got the adapter. Yeah. So I wired my house up with ThinNet. But everywhere you went, you had two cables with a connector bridging them together. If you hook in a computer, okay. they both have to plug in separately. It was so inconvenient. It was, wow. So I tried 10 base T after that. This is 3 megabit and, and 10 megabit uh, ThickNet. But it's mm -hmm. from 1978. So it's Three early. To 10. 3 to yeah, 10. Yeah, I, I got myself point to point as close as I could to have the least amount of, amount yeah. of like jumbled up stuff sticking out like that Craig computer. And this was actually done by a, a, compu a robot huh. arm that would do this. Oh. It was one of the first ones yeah. called Stitch Welded. Yeah, all my prototypes, that's what I did. You did that. Yeah. But when yeah. Steve Jobs wa would hand wire him, he, he would um, zip zip um, wire wrap tool it. Yeah. And then when. Uh, Bill and Fernandes wire wrapped my early computer, cream soda computer, he wire wrapped. Bzz, 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 and Pearl Smith mm. always made these little ties around the bundles. He had a really neat wire wrapping technique. Mm. I remember. Oh. Daniel showed me the, his uh, Mac wire. I believe it. I believe yeah. It. it was the first computer. It was the computer everybody saw and kind of copied because it had a graphical interface with trash bins and folders and stuff. And this was from 1981. And so everybody looked at that, and we actually found, Daniel and I found the original Macintosh business plan from uh, July of 81 that showed the whole multi-year plan for Apple, for the, both the Mac project and the Lisa project, and it was presumed lost. We actually, I, I have scans of it. It's amazing reading. Wow. Amazing reading. If you wanted, I could send it to you. This was their book, Fumbling the Future. How Xerox invented and ignored. So this room sort of a Xerox room, and here's their yeah. first touchpad mouse in 1980. This is a CPM machine that had a full-page graphic. Weird yeah. stuff and wow. a touchpad mouse. No idea all the stuff they'd done. They had done, yeah, it's incredible. This is the machine that OS X was written on, mm -hmm. the, the Three Rivers Perk. In too early for that kind of a machine. Yeah. Because yeah. Apple proved it. Yeah, yeah. And these Apple went in too early. They went in maybe five, ten years early. With the Mac and By doing that, they lost all their market share. To uh, Microsoft. Yeah, they lost the market share game. Mm -hmm. And um, Microsoft was smart enough not to build it till it was ready for the price, the masses to buy it. Mm -hmm. The marketing, the marketing knowledge of what can you and Steve Jobs was always saying, Bill Gates could have done these great things for you the world, but he just sat back and collected money. 
Well, he meant Steve, Bill Gates could have done what we did, step up to the higher price machine that was really above what the world wanted in the masses at the time, and then Apple would have been on a fair competitive spectrum. Yeah. If Microsoft built the same machine at the same price, yeah, then we'd be fair with them, but yeah. they were they were building the machine that really was the right one for their era. For and eventually time, yeah. eventually this machine would be the right one because yeah, of cost. That's why yeah. Lisa, which cost ten thousand bucks and was, had yeah, a hard drive price was way too. too ahead of its price. Remember the remember the T shirt, uh, Windows ninety five equals No, you know why yeah. why Lisa cost ten thousand? Why? It had a megabyte of RAM. Oh. Which is for a GUI machine to do it the right way right. with multiprocessing, you yeah. tended to need a megabyte of RAM. Macintosh made the screen so tiny, black and white only, they did every trick in the world to cut the RAM down to 128K. Special programming tricks wow. took longer design, but Lisa needed one megabyte of RAM and that cost 5000 retail yeah. in that time. So, of yeah. course, the Lisa computer so cost 2000 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was all RAM. Yeah, the and RAM. These, these things huh. cost. 13, See, we were jumping. You get ahead of your time, and you just wait a couple of years, and eventually that's the right machine to make price wise. This it's thing, hard to do a graphic machine. This hmm, thing cost RAM. thirteen thousand dollars a seat, and needed to have a server and a fully. Yeah, I remember. And and uh, it drew ten amps. I didn't remember the server business. It had to have a server, so you needed a full on server, way ahead of its time. No, no, way, way that was ahead. why they hardly sold any stars. Yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred thousand or something. Yeah. Hundred thousand? I don't I think, think they, I don't they sold. Bet yeah, between I thought this they only one sold and a few hundred stars. between this one and this one, yeah, they sold it all big companies and governments. There were uh, a lot of government like, contracts. Yeah, huh? these are from the government oh, here. And, but let's go in the next room because that's got. At least it was a great them. machine. Yeah. Yeah. With the built-in cassette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they so came. Cool. Chuck Pedal came to the garage, looked at the Apple II. It sort of acted like he liked it, and we thought we had a chance to sell it to Commodore. We right. go over there. By then, he's, yeah. he has sold Commodore on doing the same thing, but real cheap because they didn't know how to do the color and all. <laughs> and one of the things I always like, and I put the card down below, but mm -hmm. North Star built-in five and a quarter inch floppies. If you pull their drive controller out, which I did to compare to yours, mm -hmm. there's 28 chips on the single drive controller on the North Star because yeah. that was a contemporary with the Apple II. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah. I always show them together. I always show them your design for two floppies and and then I this think one. North Star might have been the one I had a manual for, and I opened it up to look at their schematic and see what I wasn't doing that I should have. Okay, because yeah. I didn't know what a disk controller was supposed to do. Right. Yeah. So right. I looked at their schematic, and in the end, I saw all it does is read and write and seek tracks, just like mine. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so. In and honor mine was mine had the processor for software, so it was more flexible. That's why I called it better. So I'm right to hold up the two different boards. And Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I'm glad. I, I got but my when I started, right. I didn't I didn't know their board, their design, or anything. I didn't know how many chips. I just knew they had a board. That's they, actually. So when I finished, yeah, when I finished, and when I first went to check, I only had five chips reading and writing. I didn't have track stepping or anything. Yeah. That's when I got scared about what am I leaving out. So I went back to their design. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of these hmm. are. Here's your Saul. Yeah, we Saul. have several Sauls. In fact, um, we were just on oh, the Osborne. We were, I just look got at the, the look at the shape. That's you know. Yeah, yeah. that was the paradigm well, of the modern. Eighty column upper lowercase yeah. takes the place of IBM Selectric. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the challengers were kind of copying yeah. the Saul. The same wooden sides and whatnot on a couple of them, but uh, this weighs so much and it was unexpandable. That's one of the problems yeah. with the Saul. Yeah, the Apple II was so expandable, especially in memory. Yeah, that was remarkable. Saved us for VisiCalc and floppies. Mm -hmm. And all of this rest is like the beige invasion of the 80s and even up to weird things that didn't survive. Yeah, like this. Oh, I remember. I had you one of those. Audrey? Did you? It's an Audrey. It's an no, Audrey. That, that was the Audrey. It yeah. was so lousy because I had bought the uh, Sony <laughs> one in Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Sony one, you could take take off the stand, carry it around your house, sit on the toilet and be watching television. Oh, yeah. It actually I'm piped kidding. television over wow. our over um, wow. 80211. That Sony one was so much better than the Audrey. Wow. Hmm. It's like uh, too bad because they killed uh, three <laughs> time, killed the Audrey. The division that had the Audrey, it yeah. had one other product called um, it was a radio. They had bought it from and I remember they had a big ad and it called uh, Love Hurts, H-E-R-T-Z. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what was the name of that radio? Love Hurts. Huh? Love it, but it was, a, it, was, it was a radio over the internet. You tune, and you basically had two dials, tune stations and tune volume. Wow. And it was just, it was done like an old style radio. Huh. God, it was beautiful, gorgeous. Just pulling oh, up all their internet radio stations. Wish right? they had, yes, and they're, they're, they had a server that constantly checked which ones were, were delivering at good speed. Wow. So you, it only brought up, as you tuned the stations, it would only bring up the ones that were good at that time Sweet. of the day. Okay. That's right. That's like, uh, 
Yeah, the Audrey. The Audrey. Yeah. So we got a black one or a white one. This it was, was a, an attempt, but they did a really lousy job, I thought, still. Yeah, it's compared to what they could do. Yeah, you can, you can no. kind of touch. Did you see the uh, Mac I'm not going to bother. I had see the, uh, enough this fun is, back when. This see is a bizarre really thing. One. This thing is so bizarre. It's called the Miko Macintosh mm -hmm. Inside King Outside. It's a touchscreen Mac with a camera and a proboscis camera. Talk yeah. about oddball things, right? But it was a kiosk, so people could walk right up to it and touch it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had a touchscreen Mac, but I've always seen so many applications for them. Yeah, this is like this. cars. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Isn't this motorcycles. great? Motorcycles. Look at this. It's a yeah. System 7. Mm -hmm. Look at the cursor going. It's really fun. So, can... Those are the early Kinectix eyeballs, huh? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Isn't that great? Yeah, some good stuff here. This is. Oh, yeah. This is. Data General Nova. Data General Nova, because I looked yeah. at the size of the board. Right, exactly. Yeah, the it's, a ma it's a mattress, right? It's a full mattress. I don't know how much is on here. Probably 4K bytes, maybe 8. I think this I was think a 20... Two sides this this might be a 24K mattress, because um, actually, if we look at it here... It would be the whole thing. No, how could it be? Wait a minute, let's see what it says. You 16K memory stack. Oh, you had to be able to buy that much. Yeah, you could buy that much, so it had to be one board. The Nova only had one board for memory. Isn't this a gorgeous sort of combination of the two worlds? It's so fine. I was told that the, that the parallel, the 45 degree lines, still had to be threaded by hand. They were made in Japan. Because here's a 1967 core, and you can actually see the donuts pretty pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then this, by the, by the early 70s, you couldn't see the donuts really. Hmm. They're so small. Hmm. But they're still donuts, though. They're still donuts. It's still and and this it's will probably. It's amazing they weren't. And this is by machine. And this is non-volatile RAM, so the RAM is still readable from this if the lines aren't broken. Because hmm. the core doesn't go away. Yeah, that's something we lost. It's like with typewriters, we had non-volatile. We had the, uh, you know, copies instantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to worry about power outages. Yeah, right. none of that. Now we do. <laughs> <laughs> now here, here's this weird room because we've got. All right, Bruce, where's your camera? The. Uh, Windows, this is Microsoft versus the world, so this is everything Microsoft, including Windows 1.0, if you can believe it, running. We got Windows 1. Hey, Salam. Hey. Now, let's hey, watch, let's watch yeah. Windows boot up. Let's show Windows 1.0. Okay, okay, let's go here. This is, this is oh, Microsoft. this is exciting. This is exciting. Watch this, guys. This is the future, Win. folks. Win. Watch it cry. 1985. Let's pretend it's watch, 85. Watch it come up. The splash screen, 1.03. And it grinds away on the B drive, <laughs> and um, and you can barely do anything with it, but you can crash it. <laughs> it's easy to crash. You can calculate. <laughs> you can calculate. Yeah, there's a calculator, and here it comes up. It actually boots slower than XP. I think it boots faster than XP. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. <laughs> but lawsuits in the, in the past. Look at this special menu. When did you see a special menu yeah. on window last time? Oh my god. Isn't that incredible? Special uh, and session. Like special shutdown on the Mac. They got away from that pretty quickly. But if we go along here, we've got just view uh, get info. Where does he, where do we think that's from, right? <laughs> Windows doesn't do that anymore, but that's the standard way of getting properties of a file on. So I can go down here, I'll get a I'll get a pop-up. It's gonna give me a I'm going to figure that out for two for ten seconds, and there's there's my prop sheet for the command.com file. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what Windows One did. When? Uh, mid '80s. So Jesus. So that the way ahead of things. Yeah, and it was hard. Way it ahead was of so this. So hard. It was yeah, ahead but that's of this. Not, that's not real graphical. No. Yeah, and I'll show, I can't it, even show. It's kind of neat to see at some point in time, but yeah, it's yeah, I'll show it yeah. to you. Actually. Less than I thought they would. Yeah, so here's, the, oh I wrote God. this entire thing myself as a kid, and it was sold in 100 countries by Xerox. But this would run on a regular old wow. DOS machine. And so I took things from the Mac, like the Dragon Drive. Is this drive. fast? Is that fast? This is like a, I don't know, an 8 megahertz. It really like slow. And you could edit images and whatnot. I built the whole thing. And then I, and they sold it all over the world it took, to do things like printing your phone bells and stuff. Uh, it was for layout for huge corporate jobs.
And then look, has a clipboard. You can drop things on the clipboard. They could design their own layouts. They could design their own documents. So that sounds like a good machine for Xerox. Yeah, and it was just a PC. But we, what we did was we brought all the inventions Xerox had done but never capitalized on, and I put them on the on the win, on the DOS machine Not small first. Talk. Not small talk, no. But I, I did actually the first GUIs on the DOS platforms. Now, I was the first person to bring a graphical interface to DOS like this. Same year as, as Windows 1.0. This is a lot better than that. Yeah, but of course, you, you get beaten out by Microsoft. You know, if you're trying to do it on their platform, you can't win. You just didn't understand it. My world in the 80s. Isn't there a plasma there? There's a plasma. Let's be thinking of something else and go this with the, the grid. I'm thinking grid. Oh, grid, grid. system. Oh, yeah, yeah there's cool. a lot of grids here. There's. I think up top, right? Yeah, there's there's one there. There's oh, one yeah. here. Here's a little grid. They made all kinds of sizes. Oh, I've got a couple of those. I couple of ones. Yeah, all kinds. And then the original compass the is downstairs. Bottom. Yeah, I have the compass. This was patented in the 1880s, if one, you believe One of them on eBay, real early one, that has a wooden shell. I saw that, that? yeah. It sold Eight, for over a thousand. Yeah, it was a thousand dollars. Mac and Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? I didn't get that one. Yeah. And then they had, a, they had one with a... Um, well, look look behind you. You've got They had one with the 8080 before that. Oh, this, yeah? was, this was their first one? Oh. Yeah. And then that was that a 6800, which was a such a piece of That's worthless... The, the terminal for the 6813. Right. Yeah, when I did the Zaltair ads. Yeah. No, no, no. It was Mitts. Mine was Mitts. You could turn in your your, your Altair or or a, or their their newer version that was really a dog. It was a 6800. 6800. The Altair 6800. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the 680. 680. I figured that, I figured everyone was going to send those in. They were going to stack up on the porch, and I didn't want to get caught. Right. Did everything I could to make sure I wouldn't get caught. And the rest of this is this is the entire Apple staging area. A functioning, uh, completely loaded was Special Edition 2GS. Yep, that runs everything. The whole deal. The whole deal yeah. uh, sent to us by a lady in Chicago, and all this stuff. And all oh, this is a prototype for the Lisa with the Twiggy floppies. It's a development system. I don't have the front bezel because when Steve changed to three and a half inch floppy, the guys tore their front bezels off, right. bezels on, chucked them out, threw them out. Where'd you get this from? Uh, Jeff Raskin. I mean, the Twiggy was such a disaster. <laughs> I hate to take credit for it, but it was my idea. We should build our own floppy. We can build it. Look, there's not it that was, much to a floppy oh, after I've done mine. You. So I got, I sucked um, some people that I used to work with at Hewlett Packard, Steve Smith, oh, and I get a, picture of a couple of other engineers. Twiggy. Well, I didn't. I didn't have any. I didn't have anything to do with the Twiggy design. All right, but, but I can, got this team going on one, on designing order. something, and that's what they came up with. <laughs> Mine actually still works with the disc. All right, the disc boot up to mm -hmm. a certain take, point. Take, <laughs> not, not have too much embarrassment, but yeah. In fact, uh, we. I just yeah. scanned in all the notes for the Twiggy design, which might have been your in your. I had nothing to do with the design. Oh, you no, 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 no. I just said we should be building. Why don't we build our own floppy disk? And we've got a couple of mechanical guys here. We had Steve Smith. Well, he was electrical, but another Hewlett Packard guy that I worked with was mechanical. And uh, do you remember the Bro Brooklyn project? Brooklyn. I remember the name. That that's a 16-bit 6502 prototype, right uh -huh. in there. Isn't that incredible? 8816. Um, this is the machine we were going to use in the Apple IIx. X. Right. Maybe Brooklyn is Apple IIx. X. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was actually working on that. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't that what was used in the GS? But then it went to the GS. Um, yeah. I don't know if they went with this. This guy had a company and he had all these plans to keep laying out the chip himself and the to make WDC it. The WDC guy, right? To bring, yeah, to bring it up to the 16 level version and to make it faster and, and basically beat the 68,000, everything. Yeah. 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 This is the only I really like the guy. I think he still sells that. That company is still around. I made that. Really? I think in Arizona. It's supposedly yeah. the only surviving yeah. pieces yeah. of the Brooklyn project. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. And the prototype for the uh, power, this all came from Apple's legal department. The, this is the prototype for the uh, Mac Portable. Look at that, all engineering plastic and everything. What's, what's on the uh, cover there, or on the screen? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's it was the, the luggable, I guess. Like yeah, 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 but I was the only person that liked it, because I was used to carrying Macs everywhere I went. I wanted to carry it yeah. with me, and it was just too... Awkward for an airplane, and that right. wouldn't fit. Right, and this <laughs> yeah. one fit. And it actually fit in the overhead. It was smaller than the... Uh, but it was the, uh, CMOS Osborne. RAM, so you turned it on, everything's there. It was smaller right than the Osborne. Yeah, no smaller dynamic RAM. Yeah, it never, slightly, it never basically... <laughs> you just, you just, when you shut it, it just so basically we, held itself in a state. And open it up, it's right there. Cool. And, and Steve, do you remember knockoffs like the Franklin Ace? Well, Franklin was the company where I saw their PC board, and it was the same as ours. Really? Every trace just, was the same, every but, chip in the same and place. And feel under here, you know what this is? Right there, the reset button. 
So every time a nerd yeah. would pull the machine or do oh. something, they would accidentally reset and lose their code. Yeah, well, it was a lot better than accidentally reaching the, over and hitting the reset. On the reset on the yeah. right, right. Yeah. Good. Or something. And I went over this Franklin booth. Hey, yo, can you make that computer, you know, and you know, and I designed it. You know, I'm your chief engineer, you know, once you admit it. <laughs> the press is gathering, the press was gathering around us. The president Franklin said, Okay, okay, yes, you are a chief engineer. And I walked away happy, thinking I won the battle, but I should have said, Where's my salary? Ah, right, right. Where's my lost salary? Where's my pay? I just wanted credit for having designed their machine. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, Ace one hundred? Bruce? The Ace 100? No. That was the, actually there, the first one. Is there yeah. such a... Okay. Yes. Is it exact duplicate of the Apple II? It had to be. I have to look inside of it. I, I just walked into their it's first one. I saw it. When they pulled out the board at Apple, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. The same traces on the PC board. All they did was turn on a copy machine. Jeez. <laughs> you know, why do you go to school to be an engineer? <laughs> What I'm thinking, if, if as you get closer to the Oz Festival, would you like us to digitize the floppy invite that you saw so you could put of it course. on your site? Absolutely. In high res, you want to oh, see yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. Software, yeah. Software I'd love I learned it, it all. If you have it's, an extra. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 there's a deck. You. You're welcome. Thank there's you. a you deck. Actually, actually, I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> you want it? Um, actually, I probably should. I, okay, I may have had this yeah. book. It's so hard to tell. Well, that's this is the one. No, I didn't. I didn't have one that taught it this well, but I wish I had. Yeah. Well, I would have loved it. Well, there you go. If you ever PDP two. If you ever come across a time machine, then you're all set. That's programming. Well, I'll give you this. I'll give you this because I don't. I don't keep old stuff, generally. Okay. And you do, so it should stay in the right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just right down the street person. from you. Cabinet that you have and do some scanning. It's what well, the problem is. A lot of it's in my garage, and I've had a person going through it for two months. Okay. Because he needed work, and then I have some storage lockers. Okay. And getting the whole, and then I get the which box as it is. And then you're welcome to go through it and. Let me know because either online or myself. Okay. Just I'm going to publish her. I may get a publisher to do one sure. of those big, brilliant gift type books. Yeah. Scan it That'd before be nice. you write Cause it. Because it's like, because I bought one once. It was called Einstein's Twelfth Manuscript. God, big, huge book. I think it cost 200 bucks. You know, you go through and it's all his writing in German and then explanations in English. I can't understand the science of it even that he's dealing with, but I love having the book on display. A piece before of art. you write your notes on it, we should scan the original. So that the pristine originals there, and then you do a before and after. Yeah, definitely. That's no, important. no, no. The notes would be on a separate pages. Oh, like oh I see. Okay. The book, and then some gotcha. notes explaining mm. the hi some of the history of it, the Context, elements, a couple little clever things to point out. Because yeah. we remember the Waz Wonder Book we brought for you last year that had all the sweet sixteen yeah. code in there. Yeah, that's the same guy who wants to work on helping scan, uh, David Craig, the mm. the, the, the Waz Wonder Book. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe by next summer. Let, it, let us know. I know I'm pretty busy till then. If you How need about help, doing a, uh, a handheld Apple II? Ooh. Well, you know what? They we got the, we have the Apple I replicas are easy because I talk about giving the stuff away with no copyrights. Right. But right. the Apple II is <laughs> yeah. in trouble, I think. Yeah, I know. I'll talk to Steve. Maybe. Well, I met the guy who, was, who handled some of the licensing. He gave me one of the Tigers, the Tiger Learning Computers, and he said he was worked on the licensing for that, so maybe they'd be interested. Yeah, I can bet what Steve would say. No, because <laughs> doesn't want to tie Apple to images of the Apple II. Right. We've moved on to the image of Macintosh and... But you know what? Not he, you know what? What if they released it in the public domain and said, as long as you don't call it an Apple? Well, no, they wouldn't because of that. But you know what happened? Mm. I can tell you, maybe there's an out. Because I got a call from senior legal counsel at Apple two years ago. And I said, am I in trouble? Have I published something? Because we had the Macintosh business plan, the front cover on the net. Yeah. I thought I was going to get in trouble for that. Yeah. And they said, no, Steve has ordered us to get rid of everything on campus that has a rainbow logo on it. And we at the legal department have a big museum. We have machines, all these prototypes that came from them. And we have a huge truckload of documentation. And I said, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to shred it and junk it? And says, no, we can't. It's against, like, our Hippocratic oath. We can't <laughs> throw this stuff away. So we interpret what Steve said as dispose means it never comes back on campus. So they brought it here, and they gave it to me. Wow. And then I said to them, I'm putting, I, ha I put everything out onto the Creative Commons license so people can use it and share it. That's my, my philosophy. And they said, fine, we'll sign off on that. So everything that I've got... They have released from council, has released it here, including the notes for the Twiggy Floppy, everything's in there. So wow. I've got a shitload of documentation, even on Apple II, that might constitute the design for the Apple II. That's pretty cool. Mm. They released it all, because Steve didn't right want now? it. It's, it's here, it's in tubs right above your head. Ooh. Yeah. Mm.
Steve yeah. didn't Apple, want it. So an Apple II replica would be great. It could be done before that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking it'd be fun to have a little handheld one that still has like the I/O port break, bricked out of it or broken out of it with a cable and you know a video like a little micro connector so you can still actually you know interface stuff to it and hook it up to a <laughs> monitor. But it'll be handheld and have an LCD display and a built-in <laughs> keyboard, just like a little PDA except it's a it's a native Apple II. Just like they did I'd the, like the, the build Commodore in, 64. Well, of course, you, you, yeah, yeah, even on the original you. Apple II, you had the one slot that there were a few addresses that you could. Turn it on, turn it off. Right. If you can write a program that turns signals on, turns them off, you can. You could do. You can come I up mean. with so many creative yeah. ideas, and that's what I'm talking about. It'd be really cool to just have a, a little, a little micro Apple IIe that has all the I/O, the video out, everything that the original had, except obviously for slots. But you know, with the ROM and everything, basic, and you can make it like a, a little. You know, well, it'd be fun I could, for kids. I it would have excess of ROM and 80 columns, well, sure. 40 mode, sure. and. The, the better boards. It would have the better boards. Right. Right. But I think I'd also plug in probably well, some experimenter board, just hobbies board. that has a lot of inputs and outputs that it can deal with the world because it was so easy. Yeah, just exactly. In basic, with pokes, you could actually turn something yeah. on. It it where did that world ever go? That should exist. I mean, people build emulators, and you know they've not I, gotten in trouble. You know what I did with my Apple IIe a couple of years ago? I needed to read some punch cards, mm -hmm. so I hooked an old deck punch card reader to my Apple to a... Uh, <laughs> uh, a card really? with a card with a sixty five twenty two on it because that's that's what I know the Apple sure. II. Yeah. And then from there, so it, it all yeah all the uh, signals for the punch card uh, reader has twelve <laughs> data signals of course for the punch card rows, and then it has like uh, four control signals for you know if the hopper gets stuck or if it runs out of cards or whatever, and then um, and then you know I use the the interruption stuff on the P, on the the VIA. And it it reads the uh, card in, and depending on what format the card is, uh, have a different table, you know, for deck or for IBM or whatever. And then it uh, it reads in a whole card one at a time, and then shoots it over a serial port to a PC. So it's basically like a a gateway between the punch card reader and the PC. See, Waz, well, he built a replica of the PDP one. Can you believe it? Incredible. Wow. Functional. PDP one functional replica. Based on a simulator. You should you should There's buy a one. Sure. You should buy one because you can play Space <laughs> yeah. War on it.